I didn't realise that I was struggling until one day that I seemed to just, I think, seemed to break. And I'd send out emails in the morning, and the contract manager came, came into the office as my phone was taken through the office floor. And I didn't care if it was kind of wrong, wrong, wrong. I was just getting, I got myself so worked up, didn't care if it was wrong. So he asked me to just go in here, walk for half an hour, come back and see him. Came back and seen him after half, half an hour after I walked on the site. And I said to my boss, I'll be back on Monday, I'll be fine. And then I was signed up for seven months. It was weird because I've always been brought up to just get, get on with it. And didn't really understand mental health until oh, the journey I've been through, I've kind of understood it a lot better. The national statistics, which shown us just now that the suicide rate in middle-aged men is really, really high. Very high, in fact, and it's even higher, it's significantly higher for, for men who work in the construction industry. And for men in particular, there is still a stigma. They don't want to feel weak or lacking in the sort of macho spirit by admitting that they've got an issue that needs to be dealt with. So although there is still a stigma, particularly with men who find it more difficult to talk about it, the stigma I think is declining and the more we can open things up and talk about it, um, the less that stigma will be. Recognising that people are struggling is hugely important, especially within the construction environment. You can see on a day-to-day -day basis that people are under a lot of pressure. It's not about probing when people don't want to be probed. It's about listening actively, looking actively to see if people's body language is changing, if their demeanor is changing, just if anything's changing, and just having an active interest in how their general well-being is. When people are dealing, especially with poor mental health, the changes in them can be quick and intense, or it can be gradual and slow. And I think that's what makes mental health such a complex subject. It's completely uh, unique person to person, situation to situation. And again, it might not always be related to work, but it could be a combination of work um, and also their personal life. So it's a change of behaviour, a change from the real them, um, that lets us think for a moment or two, hmm, they're not quite as they were. I, I wonder what it is that might be going on. And, and I think that then you have to try and choose whether by very gentle approaches, um, you can open up the idea that if they were, if they wanted to, and there was something going on, and they wanted somebody to talk to, um, maybe that would be a, a sensible way. Because in Samaritans, our, one of our central messages is that talking helps. If you can talk about your troubles, then that shares the burden and things begin to get better. You know, if you're suffering with with, uh, with struggles around about your job, um, then you need to try and take control of that if you can. There are so many different ways that CALA in particular can help. You've got the Mental Health First Aid Scheme. There's a lot of resources available in terms of webinars and guest speakers that have been going on recently. And it's really encouraging within CALA that we're taking that sort of stuff seriously. And again, I would urge us all to take part in that and continue to push Cala to be an inclusive and a supportive um, company. It's, it's, it's great to see the change in a lot of the people and it's when I walk around the developments I've, I've actually had people coming up to me and asking and asking for advice and where they're going to speak to so. Finding someone you can trust to talk to is going to be so important uh, and that's where the work of the Samaritans begins to come in. Forcing people to talk is one of the worst things you can do because so people talk when they want to talk, people will talk when they're ready to talk and it's just letting people know that we are there 
there is support within the industry, there is support from the site teams, there is wider support from charities and organisations, and the help is there if it's needed. My advice for anyone who's struggling for mental health is, is just seek out advice, pick up the phone, the phone Samaritans, if you've no one else to speak to, but there's a lot of mental health first aiders that go about all our developments in our offices. Just seek that help. The bravest person alive seeks the help, you know, so we care about our staff, we care about our employees. Nobody should sit in silence and suffer. Just go and speak to someone. 24 hours a day, any day of the year, you can pick up the telephone, a free phone, and you can phone Samaritans, and there will be somebody on the end of the telephone for you. There is no end point in this, and it needs to be front and centre when thinking about our people as to how we continue to support them. Society will change and that will mean that things that people are potentially struggling with will change. And I think given some of the really well documented statistics around about our industry, suicide rates are tragically high in our industry. We cannot afford to think that the job is done, we've got to keep doing more.